Good afternoon. My name is Janessa Price, and I work with the Transnational NGO Initiative here at Maxwell at Syracuse University. Today, I'm undertaking a brief interview with Brian Cute, CEO of the Public Interest Registry. Thank you, Brian, for allowing us to interview today. Um, Thanks, this Vanessa. will be very helpful for students and faculty alike. Um, so first of all, for those who don't know what PIR is, um, could you talk more about that and the mission and the nature of the organization? Sure. Uh, Public Interest Registry is a not-for-profit. We are the operator of the .org address on the internet. Um, so what does that mean? We effectively manage on a day-to-day -day basis all of the lookups for .orgs on the internet around the world. There are over 10 million registered .orgs. Um, we are the technical wholesaler in the marketplace. So if you were to buy a .org, Janessa or an NGO word, they would likely go to Network Solutions or GoDaddy or one in one one of the retail outfits that sells to the general public. We're the wholesaler behind the scenes and we make sure that all of those org addresses are live on the internet every day. Okay. And how did you first become interested in this type of work? Uh, my original area of interest was really um, international relations and international business going back to my undergraduate studies and my career path followed an interesting uh, direction toward international trade but at one juncture um, I was invited to practice at a telecommunications law firm. So really it was the marriage of, of an interest in international relations and business and telecommunications and communications. And then when the internet um, really exploded in the 1990s, um, that's when I got a deep interest in this, in this area. I've been working in the domain name industry since 2002, so well over 10 years. Okay, so what would you say are some of the core challenges uh, that PIR is facing currently? So right now we're facing um, two fundamental challenges. Um, one is uh, increasing competition in our market, actually. Um, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, or ICANN, which is the technical coordinator of all the addressing for the Internet, um, opened up the doors to new addresses a few years back. Uh, there will be over 1,000 new extensions, .com, .net, .org, but now .sports, .tennis, .new York, .paris, coming onto the internet. So users have many, many, many more choices. Um, so competition is one of the biggest challenges we face. <clears throat> the other is, um, in a strange way, really kind of introducing our organization to the stakeholders that we serve, the not-for-profits and the NGOs. Because we have been a wholesaler kind of in the background, taking care of the technical operations of .org, historically we haven't had as much interaction as you might guess with not-for-profits and NGOs directly. We've been spending the last few years doing coordinated outreach to NGOs around the world to make that connection, introduce ourselves, and find out how we can better serve them. Um, in your words, what would you say are the skills needed to be an effective leader? Um, I think listening is one of the biggest um, tools and skills that you have to have. Um, people skills, understanding people, um, really having a keen sense of what motivates people. Um, uh, how they how they like to be motivated, how they like to collaborate, uh, what really pulls the dynamics of a team together. I think that's absolutely critical. Um, as a leader, you're expected to have a vision too. I mean, you really are expected by whether it's your board of directors um, or your shareholders to have a clear vision about where your organization and uh, your business or your activities need to go in the future. Um, so can you talk more about your time here at TNGO as a fellow and the research um, the team was able to put, pull together for you and how you'll use that going forward for PIR? Sure. Um, first of all, it was a really unique experience. Um, for someone in my role, uh, you know, you don't very often get to take off for two weeks from work and, and spend it in a focused way like I did. So that was really welcome. Um, in terms of the work, what I found really rewarding 
really rewarding was interacting with the students. Um, I, I knew that I would have good research and analysis and conclusions delivered by the students, uh, but it was more in the discussion, uh, it was more in the Q&A, more in how we together kind of looked underneath the data and really get down to some basic fundamental questions. I mean, we were focused on millennials and their behavior and what motivates them to give and to donate. Um, and some very good research has come out of that. Um, I really enjoyed the back and forth of, of trying to understand more deeply underneath the data, what's really, what's really the truth there. Um, what we're going to do with that is part of how we serve NGOs uh, with our new service.ngo is to provide some educational components, right? So already we're providing some training on how NGOs can effectively use social media platforms to present themselves well and effectively. Um, what we'll do with this data is we'll integrate it into some more educational pieces, primarily focused on how can an NGO present themselves and their cause in a way that's going to connect with millennials. You know, the, how they do it from a content perspective, the messaging they use, the data they use so that they have a, a higher possibility of having a millennial audience connect with that and say, yes, I want to support that, and I want my network to support that. Okay. Could you talk a little bit more about OnGood and how it'll be beneficial to, to NGOs? Sure. So OnGood is what we call a solution. It's a suite of services. It's a .ngo and a .ong domain name. Both of them, are, they're validated. So the NGO who gets these addresses, unlike .org, which is open, they have to be validated. It's exclusively for NGOs. They have to go through a validation step. We need to see a piece of evidence that indicates that this is, in fact, a genuine NGO. Then with that, once it's validated, the name can go live on the internet. And with that, they get entry into a searchable directory so they can be easily found by a donor. They get a really simple to populate profile page, easy to manage content so they can present their mission, their contact data, maybe some visuals about the impact of the work they're having, and also a Donate Now widget so they can activate a Donate Now button. So the, the idea is if you find, if you went on the internet tomorrow and there was some cause you wanted to support um, in Kenya, but you didn't know the NGOs on the ground, and you really had this particular mission, whether it was water uh, or children or something in mind, that you could come to OnGood, very easily search Kenya NGOs, the sector of water, um, and find NGOs that you know are genuine. You can read their missions and how, about they, how they go about having impact, and you can make that decision right there with confidence. You know what, I wanna give them 50 bucks. This is something I wanna do and I found them easily and I, can, I believe they're genuine and they're gonna do good work. That's the benefit that OnGood offers to the NGOs and frankly to the donors as well. Okay. Well, I think this has been very helpful, a very informative interview and thank you very much for speaking thank with me. Thank you very much.